Welcome scientists. I am here from Professor Egghead. Again, my name is Professor Allison and I'm so happy that you could join us today for our live stream. So today we're going to talk about fossils. What are fossils? Well, first of all, let's talk about that word. Fossils come from a Latin word that means literally dug up. It means dug up. So fossils, which you've probably heard of, are dug up and they're either remains of an animal or they're a trace from an animal. What does that mean? So what that means is that they're either imprints from the animal, like when somebody left their footprints, for instance, if you were walking on the beach, I'm sure you've seen your footprint before, well, that's the sort of thing that we're getting when we see a fossil, except what we're seeing is the imprint because there's been a layer of some hard material over many, many, many years. So there are trace fossils, which are from the imprints, and then there are body fossils, which are from the actual bodies of trapped insects or other animals that were trapped and then over time, over many, many years, there have been layers and layers that have been hardened over time. So the animal's not really, not actually in there anymore, but the remains show us what that animal might have looked like or did look like. Now, they can't be actually called fossils unless they're 10,000 years old or older, but what we're gonna make today is like a fossil. All right, let's begin. So go ahead and when you're actually doing this experiment on your own, if you can, you'll need these items. You're going to need some sand because we need that layer that's just like the ocean, right? We have that layer of sand in the ocean. You're going to need also some water. Another thing you're going to need is plaster of Paris. That's a special material that's going to harden our imprint. What we're making is like a trace fossil. You're also gonna need some sort of material that you're going to make the imprint with. I've got a shell. You're gonna need something to stir your material up with as well. So you can go ahead and follow along here. First of all, I and you all you're also gonna need to stir, something to stir your materials up with. So I'm gonna take just about an ounce of this plaster of Paris. We're gonna turn that camera up so that you can see me too. All right. I'm gonna take an ounce of that plaster of Paris and I'm, pour it, I'm going to pour it into my cup. And what we're going to make here is called a mixture. That's when you mix, yes, that's right. That's when you mix two substances together to create another substance, a mixture. Now you're going to pour one ounce of that plaster of Paris, uh, of the water in with the plaster of Paris. And you're going to want to mix that around. Now I've mixed mine a little bit early. I actually forgot to tell you something. You are going to need some clay as well. And here I've got my clay. And what you wanna do is you only need about a quarter of this amount. I have a block here. You're gonna need a quarter of that. Now you wanna roll it around, you wanna soften it up because this is what you're gonna make your imprint with. You want to soften it up and make it into a ball. There we go. 
Now I've got my ball. Then you want to flatten that ball just like this. Just make sure that you're on a surface that's okay with whoever is your supervisor for this. An adult should be around. And you want to make that imprint now with whatever you have. So I'm going to make mine with a shell. You've got to push pretty hard to make that imprint. Ugh. Oh no, I broke my shell. That's okay, that probably happens as well in real life. With fossils, the material probably does break up. It does disappear because what we have left is the actual imprint. Now we're gonna lay that imprint right on top of our ground floor layer our sand that's just like the ocean floor so like our little ocean and you're going to take your plaster of paris and water mixture that i've got right here that you stir it up i'm stirring mine up a little bit more here i want to make sure it's nice and blended and then you're going to pour it right over the imprint you made, and you want to cover that whole thing up. Now, if you have a cover, which I do happen to have, you want to stick that cover right on top of your cup and just let it dry. And over time, this material, that mixture that you made, is going to harden and you're going to have a really cool looking fossil. That's actually not a real fossil because it's not over 10,000 years old. However, you get to have your own imprint that you made all by yourself. Now, how are those imprints made? Well, let's think about the material that these animals are walking across. A long, long time ago, there were dinosaurs. And when they walked across a surface, over time, the surface might have had water on it, just like our, our sand, you know, by the ocean when you make footprints. And that water softens the sand. So then you are making an imprint, just like a dinosaur years and years and years ago made an imprint that we now have fossils from. Let's go ahead and explore how water softens materials. Right here, I did already experiment with this and you can do it at home too. I took tissue paper on, and laid it on top of a cup. I did three layers for mine. And then I took a rubber band and I stuck it around the cup. Now you're gonna need some marbles for this part. And you're gonna wanna pour a little water into your dish. You can do this with a bowl as well. I've got a cool looking Petri dish here. And now you've got your marbles and you want to experiment and see how many marbles you can lay on top of this surface that you made just of dry tissue paper. This is bath tissue paper. You can also use paper towel. You can try different materials. Now the idea is that these marbles have been sitting in this water, so they're wet. How many marbles do you think it will take to break the tissue paper. Now, as you see, I've already done this before. So here's mine. Let's see if I can add more to this one that's already wet. Seems to be staying pretty well. You can do this at home. 
And you can do it sort of like a competition and see if other family members or whoever you have at home with you might want to experiment with you and see if a different material holds better than your tissue paper. You can try with paper towel, tissue paper, actual paper, or Kleenex. And you can see that over time, water softens that material, the paper or the tissue, whatever you're using, and eventually it will break with enough pressure. Well, scientists, that's all for our lesson today. And remember, fossils can't be called fossils unless they're over, they're 10,000 years old or older. So what we're making is like a fossil, but it's not that old. Oh look, mine dried. Let's take a look at the one that I first made before I met with you today. Let's see how it looks, shall we? Whoa, cool. It's like I'm a real archaeologist. Those are the scientists who dig for fossils and cool other remains. Whoa. So you'll have to dig around and eventually you're going to see your fossil. You'll take out your clay and you'll see your fossil. See, mine was a little shell. Cool. Now mine didn't harden just enough, so I recommend waiting even a whole day so that your fossil's really, really hard and then you'll have it forever and it'll be a great keepsake and it will, re will remind you how fossils are made. Thanks for joining us today. Remember to subscribe, like, Follow us, we are on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and we love seeing pictures and videos of your own experience, experiments. So feel free to send them our way and maybe they'll be featured on our page, who knows? Thanks so much and see you next time.